just want to show you the uh, the lines here. Uh, we've just sprayed the bottom line and the top line. Bottom line indicates where we want the level of the foundation to start. So that's where the shelf or the floor is going to start. Gives the machinist here uh, a clear visual of where he is uh, shaping to in terms of his depth. So that's the bottom line. And you see we produce the shape of the bunker and the bottom line with this and also the sand line. So this is a fairly flat sand line. It's just a very gentle fall into a nose here and then a rise back up the other side. Sometimes that sand line will be much closer to the actual base of the bunker. If it's a traditional pot bunker, for example, it may be a little less of a sand flash face. But here we're having a combination of sand flash face with a revetted or sod wall edge. The top line indicates where the machinist or the shaper is going to actually start his dig and he's going to get a depth there down to this bottom white line. The angle he's going to work at is usually 65 to 70 degrees. That may vary a little according to design but that's the standard sort of angle we work to. It's fairly important that he does that because the 65 degrees or the 70 degrees angle will allow us to put the material fairly close to the wall, thus not having to make adjustments to the wall and also the volume of backfill that we use will not be or will be kept to a minimum if we shear the wall at close to 65 degrees. Our angle of sod wall bunker edge is 65, the wall is close to 65 then it makes sense that the actual backfill we need is going to be limited as we can put the tiles right close up to the wall <coughs> maybe leaving a couple of inches for play and stability so that's uh, what you see in here our shaper is now shaping up this wall according to those lines clear indication for him clear visual and uh, yeah we'll check in a little later we're here at Norba Golf in Spain. We've just prepared the first stage of the bench here. So this particular bunker and bunker style, you see that there's a rise and fall in the floor in the foundation. So the foundation is rising here uh, into this corner and the foundation is not flat, it's just rising and falling so that the sand line does the same thing. And the Urubanga turf will also flow up and down vertically in terms of the floor. So the next stage to this process will be to put some pea gravel or a compactable material on this shelf. We'll take a whacker plate, compact that pea gravel and we'll find our levels. Once we've got our levels We'll uh, put the first layer of synthetic down, check that, make any adjustments we need to make and then we'll show the process of actually building the wall. But the key thing at this stage is to get a foundation which is flat in terms of um, being compact, firm and uh, having the floor do what we want in terms of elevation. For some bunkers it's entirely flat, for some bunkers that floor moves and it rises and, and it falls according to uh, what the designer or the client uh, uh, sees as his vision of the bunker. So we'll show the next process in the morning and the next part of that build and uh, we'll show each stage as we go along. So you can see here that uh, we've now started putting pea gravel on the foundation layer. What we're trying to achieve with this particular bunker is a slightly rolling floor. So the elevation, the vertical height sort of rolls up and down according to the surrounding landscape. So the purpose of the pea gravel is to allow us to level off and then we'll use a compactor or what we call a whacker plate um, 
to um, compact this foundation layer, give us a firm compacted uh, foundation to work on and to put the first layer of tiles. So we're just um, skimming off the levels at the moment and we'll uh, then get the wacker plate on and we'll just sign in and show that in just, uh, just a moment. So here we can see the, uh, the wacker plate of the compactor just uh, compacting this foundation layer so that we can lay our first set of tiles. So we'll just probably do this two to three times or however many times we feel it's necessary. Check our levels, put the first layer down, check levels again and uh, once we're satisfied we will then start building the wall. Here you can see the turfs. You see it's sand filled, so the fibre filled with sand right to the top of the fibre gives the material its strength and stability. It's uh, back in here and you'll see, if you look very closely, you'll see stitching just so. And if we cut from the second stitch, we don't want to be cutting down here. If we do that, we'll get a pinch in the front edge which is visible. So we want to cut from the second, maybe third stitch downwards. There's two ways of cutting. Slits, which is what I'm doing here. So you'll see a straight slit coming down the back edge, like so. The tighter the bend, the more slits you need. So we can see now we can clearly manipulate this tile into a shape uh, according to the. See here, we've got just straight slits, like so. We're cutting about second or third stitch down cut from down here you're going to get a pinch in at the fiber end so we cut from the second or third stitch down that gives us the ability to shape the turf as we want to according to the shape of the bunker well cut some v a minute cut a v for me so if we want to that's a concave what we're doing here now is convex so we pull a v out that. that gives us the ability to put it over to create a shape which is a convex, like so. So, depending on whether it's concave or convex, we use slits or V's accordingly to shape it into the bunker. So, as well as a V. Got the cut at the end so that you can line the next tile up and work it in uh, when you're producing that concave shape. So it's the V and the slit at the end just to cut that end off so we can uh, marry up the next tile. So the next stage of the build is simply to put down the first row of Dura tiles or Dura turf, find the shape and find the lines, uh, which is what we've done here. You can see a combination here of concave and convex lines. We'll show the cutting in just uh, a moment. So we've just traveled the length of the bunker, putting down our first line, spending a little time just ensuring that the shape is good, the shape is what we want, the shape is what we expect uh, of the architects involved. Um, the architect obviously will cast an eye over what, uh, what his vision is. Either way, or whichever way, 
Uh, a little time is taken just on the first layer to shape up the bunker. You can see the lines there. Okay, so we've cut away from uh, the actual bunker face we were working on to show uh, the stacking of tiles. It's a little easier here with the model. So we have a little model here that um, we use and uh, as you can see I put the first line down and um, we just look at the stacking. So this is a concave shape, very simple, very straightforward. Put the first line down, the second tile goes on. Well, there's two ways to stack these tiles. There's what we call single layer and double layer. So if we're going single layer, we take it back ever so slightly. The measurement is about five mil to get a 65 degree angle on the bunker face. We compress it down, give it a little pat. Next one goes in. Same thing, we get a 5 mil gap and we continue like so around the shape of the bunker. Very straightforward, very simple, just ensuring that the tiles are nice and firm and compacted. Now what we will do is take some backfill, in this instance I've just got plain sand. On most sites sand would not work unless it was a sand based site and backfill will be specified on a site by site basis depending on what ground conditions there are. But we put the backfill in, this hardwood here is taking the, the role of the excavated bunker wall that we are working against. Typically we'll have a between a 3 and a 6 inch um, play there so we'll have that much backfill going on on each layer as we've said before, if the prep work is done well and it's 65 degrees on the back wall, then the backfill can be kept to a minimum. So the next layer goes on, like so. Again, with a 5 mil gap. And so on. So we're building our wall up, tile by tile. In a fashion that's very simple and straightforward to understand. So I'll just go one more layer on a single just to um, demonstrate what it it looks like. So there we go. You can see the layers going up there and we just continue on that cycle and our backfill in. The important thing with the backfill is to compact it really really well so typically it'll be walked in and then wacker plated in every layer or two. So this backfill is really compact, really nice and stable, really critical aspect of the build. So I'm going with another layer here, like so. Sometimes you find that the tile might have curved up a little bit, just something to be aware of, back and down, and off we go. So that's a simple single stack that uh, has been demonstrated there. We've got a consistent gradient of about 65 degrees, consistent width between tiles, and uh, everything there is looking pretty good in terms of the aesthetics. So we've seen uh, the single stack, which uh, gives a thinner looking revetment. More traditional thickness of revetment, we use a slightly different technique called double stack. Very simple, instead of having the one tile stack back each tile at a time vertically we actually double stack it so two tiles are exactly flush together like so giving the impression that this is one turf so i'm going to just pull all these forward slightly like so and like so so that effectively two tiles now sit flush together and a double stacking system to give a thicker looking revetment. So here we go again. I'm going to just get my tiles on, like so. I've staggered back now. We've got two tiles there. I've staggered back again about 5 mil to get about 65, maybe slightly more than 5 mil on the double stack. But we can, you can see that in the specs. And uh, so we're talking about the same kind of gap, just smidgen more for double stack. 
by putting two tiles exactly flush together as you can see there so it's the same system apart from the fact that we are putting two tiles flush together to give a thicker look together we put sand and we smear it in the face and what will happen here is the sand will work its way into the fibers and effectively take away the look of and, uh, two singles most courses nowadays are looking at the double stack system again the backfield goes in behind in exactly the same way as it would a single stack ensuring that everything is compacted firm and solid so when we're talking about tapering with a double stack the taper is actually done on a single so the taper means well the taper effectively creates the side profile so we're looking to create an angle if this was our bunk of face and we wanted this exact angle we would taper tiles to tie in and marry into that angle so when we taper we just move top layer to the left slightly depending on how steep the, the um, Munger wall is looking to be steep, if very steep. It'd be maybe two, three, four fingers. Not so steep, five fingers, maybe a whole piece on times. Sometimes even more than that. However, regardless of the depth of the, the taper, the taper is a single taper. So even on double stack, that's the first of the two on double stack. It would be like so. But when we're tapering, we just pull the second one out. Put our next tile on, and then when we taper again, we do exactly the same thing. So we put the next tile on and we're going to taper again. This is a single stack taper. It's a double stack front system. So we're tapering on a single, but the double comes in behind it and we stack directly on top. So the next one would go like so. We've got a double stack in here, okay, but we've got a single layer on the side. That makes the side profile smoother when we marry in. Put a lay in here. You can see the, um, the tiles here already laid and uh, the tapering as we call it. So looking at the natural layer of the land, the length of taper for each layer needs to be set according to what the bunker edge is doing. So there's two ways of doing that. You can build a bunker and shape the land around it <coughs> or you can shape the bunker edge more or less to the landscape you see around which is what we're doing here we're going to cut back the turf the natural turf maybe a meter or so that will give us enough play to marry in the levels uh, <coughs> so we're using the bunker edge that we have as a guide to the top vertical height of the uh, of the bunker wall